So guys, this is uh, session number two on movement and biomechanics. Uh, last session we looked a lot of shuffling movements, movement in a short space, uh, making sure you're low and athletic and able to cover those shorter distances as quick as possible. We also looked at the basic biomechanics of a neutral stance, your kind of go-to stance. So today we're going to explore a little bit more in terms of uh, efficiency of movement and court coverage. We're looking at the crossover step, the running step, different ways of moving to the ball in order to beat the bounce and different ways we can recover back to position. Uh, we'll also explore different ways of hitting whilst on the move, hitting off that open stance uh, and different modes of uh, movement that will help you be a little bit more efficient around the court. Uh, the idea being that we practice those movements even off the court uh, and really explore that athleticism that when you go back to court you're going to notice a huge, huge difference. Session one with uh, the biomechanics, we're going to do a little bit of ball work. I'm going to show you today not throwing the ball, um, holding the ball, but just using it for timing of the throw. Uh, different to the neutral stance where we're looking at uh, linear momentum, going back to forward. We're looking a little bit more at a vertical momentum as the right leg, the right hip, in my case the right hand or my forehand, fires upwards to allow that momentum and drive off the ground. So good biomechanic in play, so just uh, observing the next few. here you'll see uh, we talked about the split step in session one um, and you'll see from the split step whether I'm going into my forehand out to my backhand or I'm working backwards one of the practices we talked about was the opening of the hip in the direction you're moving uh, the opening of the hip tends to also involve the opening of the foot and that can be done as part of the split so as you're watching the clips just uh, keep an eye out on my my split step, how I lead into it, how I push out, and how that links to the direction I'm moving in. A skill acquisition perspective we last session we talked a lot about the shuffle um, as we've talked about today we're looking at the cross steps so two different types of movement and that largely depends on how much time you've got how wide you're pushed how stretched you are uh, and exactly where on the court you are so just going to show you a little bit of differentiation that will help you to really understand the differences um, if you have a go mixing the two skills Uh, 
uh, one stage further. Of course, there's times where shuffle step, a crossover step, I'm gonna cut it in terms of how much pressure you're under, how much court you've got to cover. So see if you can have a watch of the next clip. Pick out the types of movement I'm using and what that means in terms of where I am on the court and what I do in terms of recovery. link to that where I hit the ball is going to determine where I recover so what type of movement I use to get to the ball get from the ball won't necessarily match up if I hit a down the line ball from way outside the court I'm gonna to have to move very differently to get into the correct position left side of center so you would tend to see more of a sprint recovery if I was however hitting a cross-court ball from this position to get back into position you may just see a shuffle so the awareness of where you are in the court but also where you've hit the ball and your management of time and space will link to how well and how you choose to move so again uh, just to reiterate I'm going to show you the same on the backhand side that we talked about a shuffle a cross step and a running step uh, and you guessed it you can move the same way whether it's to the forehand deep to the forehand, deep to the backhand, wide to the backhand, and indeed moving forward, diagonally forward. And you see those same modes of movement, whichever direction. We're gonna, not gonna concern ourselves too much with the, the movement forward. That's gonna be a, a session that we put together later in the week on transition. Uh, but I'll show you a quick demonstration of the same types of movement in different directions on the backhand side. The one we haven't mentioned, which is of course relevant, is the back pedal to move. Um, it's obviously less frequent than the ones we've practiced already, but it is nonetheless worth practicing, and I'll include that in my practice. a lot about uh, of efficiency on the move how you get to the ball how you get from the ball of course there's different ways of hitting as you move it's not the case that we are balanced and able to hit from a static position modern game the speed the balls hit the quality of the ball coming means we're often hitting on the move but that dynamic balance is key so we're going to look at uh, different modes of movement uh, whilst hitting uh, it will link a little bit to how we about moving to the ball but I just want you to have a, a watch of these next uh, examples and also watch the impact of how I choose to hit on how far I move beyond the hit. I want to uh, just have a fixed point for you to practice this whether it's a line on the court on the ground in the garden where you have that foot planted and you are practicing the shot itself so there is now no movement before you practice that shot we're talking about the movement as you strike I'll show you that once more we have a pivot we have a hop we have a shuffle we have crossover and lastly we have a running so again just watch for the, the differences between those and how it impacts on how far I might go now lots of you will have a preference for which one you choose to do you might be limited to a certain type of movement a habit but it's necessary and you'll see at the very top of the game and even at the highest levels of 13 and under 14 and under international tennis. But the versatility in that type of movement is key. You need to be able to hit running forehands, be balanced, be able to recover and stay in the point. See the same on the backhand here? Same fixed point. See if you can 
have an observe here. I'm going to mix them up and see if you can guess which one is in play. show you that uh, the hitting on the move uh, just shifting across the back end um, I'm going to mix up how I move to the ball bringing together what we've learned how I move to the ball and different ways of hitting whilst on the move to see if you can watch out for the, the intricacies if you like and the differences of a running step a crossover step hitting on the moves a pivot a hop um, I'm going to show you just on the backhand side here but when you practice this We'd like you to try and practice as many forehands as backhands and don't feel like you're limited in terms of direction. You could be directly back from the, the start point, diagonally back, four o'clock, three o'clock, etc. etc. So a tough workout, um, a good point I think, whilst you're moving fairly explosively, athletically, dynamically, um, hopefully I've demonstrated actually how to keep good form, good biomechanics when you're under pressure, it's not a, a flailing at the ball. So a good point just to bring back the football, the med ball, whatever you're using, and just try and include that same feeling of driving of the hips using the ground force, good biomechanics. Nice muscle relaxation whilst you're in extreme movement. Picture Federer, picture of that flow of his movement. You never see him plodding through.